Paul Brown transformed the game from a physical exercise to an intellectual exercise. Lou Groza has the question, and Coach Paul has the answer. He wanted to control every single detail on the field. He wanted to know exactly what every player was going to do, and he wanted them to know exactly what was expected of them on every play. He was the first to put all his plays on paper and have players study them. It makes sense now, but at the time, it was really radical stuff. Here is a football team with a textbook. Players insert the mimeograph plays, and many hours are spent in study. He used film to study teams, to study his opponent, and no coach had done that before. When you'd go near one of his coaches, that's so all they were doing was turning that film and cutting it and splicing it. And when he talked to you, he'd tell you just about anything you'd done. We will be grading you during the regular season. It's easy to think somebody's doing a heck of a job, and then you get the pictures, and you find some guy that you hadn't thought much about is doing better than the guy you thought was doing a heck of a job. It's detailed scientific study. The pictures never lie. He wanted to control everything. Then he'd have a messenger guard to run the play in. Then the next play, another guard would come in and the first guard would come out. That's how he got his offense in. Cleveland coach Paul Brown uses his signal calling shuttle system as he sends guard Chuck Knoll into the game with the play. Until Brown, quarterbacks had always called a team's plays in the huddle. Even though he had the finest passer of his era, Otto Graham, Brown called the plays himself. He was the first coach to put somebody upstairs with a line down to the sideline. The Browns leave nothing to chance in calling plays. Blanton Collier and Fritz Heisler observe the game from a vantage point high up in the stands. They relay their information to Weeb Eubank and Paul Brown on the bench phone. He wanted to be able to see and hear in real time what was working, what wasn't working. Did they blitz that time? Here we are today, and there isn't a team in football that doesn't do this. When he did it, it was his overreaching. Critics accused Brown of ruining football, of turning his players into pieces on a chessboard. Jim Brown set the new league record for yards gained rushing. Yet the inventions continued. The timed 40-yard dash, the draw play, Graham gives the ball to Motley. It's the draw play. The pocket to protect his quarterback. Graham again runs way back. In that pocket, throws a line. Let me pass the end zone. And one creation that literally changed the face of football. And we were playing the 49ers. Otto Graham had his face uh, cut up. Uh, the guy hit him with an elbow when he was down right under my feet in the sideline. Otto suffered a deep facial wound on this play, one that required 15 stitches to close. These things uh, shouldn't happen in football. Paul Brown came up with a great big plastic thing about uh, two inches high, half inch thick. I couldn't breathe properly to bounce back, and I couldn't see. With a special face mask, and he was back in time to take the field. I said to the Riddell person that uh, handled our account, make me a... Uh, thing no bigger than the size of my little finger. It can be plastic, but with tensile strength enough to withstand the blow from the guy punching the man. He did patent it. There were royalties. He got paid for many years. Opposite. greatest inventors in the history of the world, they've done something that's changed our everyday life. Inventors also were involved in the game of football. In today's day and age, women all over America are celebrating the fact that Tom Brady's face has been protected, thanks to Paul Brown. 